Hi, this is Beth Rovelia and we are doing the Unit 1 test review. This is from class on September 25th. Give an example of how camouflage connects structure with function. This bird has brown feathers. That's part of the structure of the animal. The function of those feathers is to fly, but it's also to camouflage the animal. So the function of those feathers is to help the animal fly, but also to camouflage it. And this here is a peacock flounder, excuse me, in different environments. And so the peacock flounder has a structure in its skin and its scales that help it camouflage very well. You can see in this lower right hand picture here that it's almost invisible. It can match almost any environment that it's in. So its structure helps the function of camouflage. The difference in the location of a predator's eyes, like a fox or a leopard or a lion, they're all predators. Their eyes face forward. They're looking for their lunch. A rabbit or an antelope you can see right here, they have eyes on the sides of their head. So they're looking around so they aren't somebody's lunch. The structure of the animal shows its function. The function of an antelope, a prey animal, is to look to make sure they're not going to get eaten. So they have eyes on the sides of their heads. If I was an antelope, I'd look like this. My eyes would be here. A predator, like a fox or a lion or a cheetah, looks forward to look for their food. On a hot day, your dog crawls under your porch to keep cool. What characteristic of life does this demonstrate? So if this is your dog and it's crawling under the porch on a hot day, it's responding to the environment. So the correct answer here would be response. All of these are characteristics of life, but response is the characteristic we're talking about in this instance. Let's put these terms in order from smallest to largest. Let's look at this list here and figure out which one is the smallest. A cell here is the smallest, so we'll put cell first. All the same kinds of cells organize into a tissue, so we'll put that second. Different sorts of tissues make up your kidneys, and your kidneys are an organ. So we'll put organ next. Your kidneys are part of the organ system, your excretory system. It gets rid of waste in your body, so organ system is the next level. And then all your organ systems working together make you as an organism. So that's the correct order. Let's go check the next slide here. And it will show you that cells, tissues, organs, organ systems, and organism are the levels. One way some students remember this is cats take, cats take onions outside often. Cats take onions outside often. Kind of an unusual way to say, to remember this, but it's kind of funny. All right, let's talk about the scientific methods for a moment. The red osier dogwood shrubs are common across Minnesota. In studying one forest, a wildlife researcher noticed there were very few mature red osier dogwood shrubs. She wondered why there were so few mature shrubs. By consulting DNR records, she discovered that the deer population had tripled in the last 10 years. What hypothesis could you form from this information? Now remember, a good hypothesis often starts with if. If we do something, then something else will happen, and we also list why it's going to happen. So, if there are more deer, then they'll eat more shrubs because deer really like eating red osier dogwood.
How could we test a hypothesis? Well, we could say we could say if we put some bushes in an enclosure inside a well let's say inside a fence then the young bushes will mature because they don't get eaten. Eaten by deer. The independent variable would be how many shrubs. We decide that before the experiment. So how many shrubs are in each place where we're going to count shrubs? Some we put inside the fence, some we put outside the fence. And we have to make sure that each area is the same size. Now the dependent variable is how many are left. The dependent variable depends on what happens in the experiment. This is what it looks like when deer bite shrubs. Instead of just counting the number of shrubs, we could also count the bites on shrubs. So when you make a graph, remember the independent variable goes on the x-axis. This is the x-axis. And the y-axis is for the dependent variable. So the dependent variable goes here, and the independent variable goes here on the horizontal. Which statement illustrates how an organism maintains homeostasis? Your heartbeat increases when you start to run. You sweat when it's hot out. You eat something when you feel tired. Your breathing rate increases when you bike up a big hill or E. These are all good examples. And they are all good examples. Some people have problems with number C, with letter C, you eat something when you feel tired. Well, when your blood sugar gets low, you feel tired. Your body is always trying to maintain constant blood sugar. So you know to eat something to raise your blood sugar when you feel tired. All of these things have in common that animals are trying to maintain homeostasis. Down here, desert animals are trying to maintain their temperature. Here, you're trying to maintain oxygen when your breathing rate increases. You're trying to maintain blood sugar here when you eat something when you feel tired. You're trying to main, you are trying to maintain your temperature by sweating. Spiders and some desert animals can't do that, so they just are active at night. And you're trying to maintain your oxygen level, so your heart beats faster to circulate more blood to get more oxygen to your cells when you run. Glucose is how plants store energy. They don't remember, they don't use energy from glucose, but they store it. They convert glucose to ATP when they want to burn energy. How do they produce glucose? So how do they store the energy of sunlight? We can look at this diagram down here and you can figure out the answer from the diagram. This is the reaction. Carbon dioxide and water are put together in a complicated process called photosynthesis. It's driven by light energy, and you end up with glucose, that's the sugar right here, this is the chemical formula for glucose, 
and oxygen is a byproduct that we all love. If we have a single species at one place at a particular time, what is that called? This is kind of related to the levels of organization we, call, we talked about cells, tissues, organs, and organ systems. Then they extend into populations, communities, and ecosystems. This is just one kind of fish in one place at one time, and that's called a population. So it's one place, one time, or, and one species. So one, one, one. If you have more than one species in a place at one time, then you have a community. So there's two kinds of fish. That's a community. If we combine a community with non-living things like rocks and water, and oxygen, dissolved oxygen in the water and um, minerals in the water that support life, uh, that support plant growth. So we combined our communities with non-living things, we get ecosystems. So if you have populations and non-living things, you add those together and you get ecosystems. This is an essay question. It talks about whether animals get to choose what structure they want. Do you get to choose which nose you want? Do you have a dog's nose or do you have a person's nose? I'm thinking you know what nose you have and that you can't get a different one. The dog can't suddenly decide to have a person nose. Okay, this relates to another essay question. Glucose is for storing energy. So if you want to store your money, you can buy a bunch of gold bars and put them in a safety deposit box or the government has a huge gold reserve when they want to store money. If you want to spend money, you need it to look like this. And if you want to spend your energy that you've stored, you convert it to ATP, all of your cells convert the glucose that's stored there into ATP when they want to get things done. When you want to get things done in the community, you want to go buy groceries and buy gas, you have to have this. So we can do a little bit of a Venn diagram here. We can have ATP on one side and glucose here. Glucose is for storing energy ATP is for using energy. This happens in cells. This happens in your bloodstream and your liver and other places in your body. They both contain energy in chemical bonds. So they're both forms of chemical energy. So both plants and animals convert their glucose to ATP. That's how they get things done in the cell. So at another essay question is asking, if you can't photosynthesize, how do ecosystems you live in use solar energy to support you? Well, photosynthesis is a big thing here. We've got this, this equation for photosynthesis down here that explains what's going on here. Sunlight, the energy in sunlight, is used to combine carbon dioxide and water, and that makes what? What goes on in the plant leaves here that you and I can break down and convert to ATP? The plant can also break down this stuff that's stored in the leaves. That's this right here. And break that.